so uh, thanks a lot uh, moment for joining us so, so today we'll talk about navigating sustainable urban development in technology and data driven policy okay with me is dr momen opal he is a tenured professor at lahore university of management science sciences he received his phd and ma in electrical engineering from texas a&m university at lums he is a director of advanced communication and smart data systems and applications lab he has published over 50 papers in leading high quality journals and has two patents to his name recently he has been recognized as the best teacher out of pakistan hcc so can't just think of anybody else better than him uh, moment for this talk so moment thanks a lot for joining us thank you sir thank you sir pleasure to be to be here so, okay so moment uh, so this is about city and lands right Yep. Can you t- tell us more about the mission and goals of Center for Urban Informatics, Technology and Policy at LAMS? Yeah, so uh, thank you, Saad, uh, once again. Uh, it's a real, real pleasure uh, to be here talking to you uh, uh, once again. So um, uh, I think it's important to set some of the context, right? Um, and why we, we, we established this center called CITI, which is uh, Urban Informatics, Tech and Policy. Um, so if I can just give you some numbers, um, so there, there's some studies out there which says that Pakistan is expected to be uh, 45% urban. So 45% of the population is expected to live in cities uh, by 2030. Uh, but if you look at the criteria that UN, the United Nations Habitat uh, specifies, which is uh, uh, for a region to be specified as urban, there has to be uh, the population density has to be 400 plus people in square to kilometers. If that's the definition we follow, then Pakistan may have actually been urban, 65% urban by 2014. So this is another um, another statistic out there. So contrary to what I, uh, the the myth that I grew up with is Pakistan is rural majority. That's it's actually no longer uh, true. Um, so there's a large influx of people into the cities, and that leads to problems that you and I face every day uh, living in those cities. Um, so when we started this uh, initiative out, uh, we we figured out that that the 21st century, you know, tech uh, such as AI, uh, such as um, IoT, uh, such as data analytics could be or is in fact a crucial enabler uh, for solving uh, the, these problems. Um, so that's the essentially uh, a, a summary of where we started this out with. And if I can just define uh, or state out our goal or our long term vision i would say is to develop and promote uh, the latest advancements in technology to enable informed and sustainable uh, urban development uh, and urban planning in, in in especially in the context of pakistan especially in the context of uh, developing countries uh, so this is the long term goal uh, that we start out with uh, the way we want to achieve this uh, is through specific objectives i can i can talk about those as well uh, so we wish to for example uh develop it technological solutions which can gather data we want to develop algorithms and software to sets of uh, performing advanced urban data analytics and using the outputs of these we want to catalyze uh, and promote uh, analytics so as to enable evidence for informed decision making especially for the government especially for the public sector um, okay. And, and and associate with this is is how do we build capacity of the government uh and and especially the government and the private sector uh, the public sector and uh to create of course transfer of knowledge because we're all academics um so that's a part and parcel of what we do okay so let's just get uh, deeper into this conversation so what are some of the key challenges that developed countries face during regarding the sustainable urban development and mm-hmm. and i think you can all always go into uh, how can Informatics, technology, and data analytics will help all of us. Yeah. Uh, so I think there are two parts to this question, right? So, uh, I mean, the first part would be what are the challenges, um, and then given those challenges, how can tech basically uh, try to or it is it serve as an enabler for sort solving those challenges? Um, so, um, I mean the challenge, especially in the developing countries. So I, I can give you some statistics here as well, especially in the context of Lahore, where I live, or Islamabad. I think where from where you're talking to, uh, and so, I mean, I talked about a large influx of people moving into our cities, and because of that, our cities are growing in an unplanned fashion. I mean that that results in something called urban sprawl, 
um, that results in, in inequities with regards to access to public ser- public services. For example, I live in DHA, uh, that's supposed to be an elite or, or elitist uh, sort of an area, yet there are po- large pockets of, of unstructured areas that you find in between, and those people living there would not have the same access to public services uh, that we have uh, as, as, as belonging to what socioeconomic strata we belong to. Um, similarly, as cities expand, uh, you know, uh, at, at the right, at the edge of Lahore, somebody would take about 45 minutes or 15 minutes to drive all the way to Lums uh, from work to home and, and from home to work every day, uh, 45 minutes one way. Um, so there, there are issues were there for the mobility. Uh, and yeah, if I if I gave you some numbers, especially for the Lahore, according to Punjab Bureau of Statistics, uh, so the number of cars from 2010 to 2020 have actually doubled uh, in the city of Lahore. I mean, all the history combined from 2010 to 2009, they become 2x. Um, and the number of motorbikes, uh, that actually becomes 3x, three times. Uh, so that only normally speaks, that, that actually speaks about some socioeconomic imbalances as well. And, and motorbikes, uh, how do they, they impact people's mobility, micro mobility in particular. But nevertheless, so that leads to congestion, that leads to, um, I mean, uh, I mean, people on the road, high levels of stress, um, and and more importantly, lots and lots of air pollution um, uh, and emissions. Uh, once again, uh, quoting some numbers from Lahore, uh, so IQ Air, for instance, which is a, a Swiss uh, company uh, that installs, uh, that, that sells actually PM2.5 monitors. So PM2.5, uh, particulate matter 2.5, uh, is, are particles which are, have a diameter of less than 2.5 micrometers. And there's no way for our bodies to actually, or our lungs to filter them. And then once they get inside, the bloodstream are always there. So the the WHO sets a safe limit of 10 micrograms per meter cube. Um, that's the safe limit. The PM2.5 concentrations must be less than that. Lahore in 2022 was ranked by IQ Air as the most polluted city in the world. Uh, and the concentrations of PM2.5, would you really take, take a guess? What would those be in Lahore? <laughs> Maybe twice? It's actually 10 times. Uh, oh. oh. So the concentration of PM4.5 in Lahore is 97 micrograms per meter cube, based on the study by IQ Air. Um, and Beijing, you know, I mean, a, a few years ago, we've been hearing about stories how Beijing was so polluted. Uh, and the Beijing numbers are, are uh, three times less than, than ours are. Uh, so that's one of the other major issues. That, that, that that's because of transportation and mobility. Uh, there's some studies which attributed majority of it to uh, transportation, and of course there are other factors as well. Um, so these are all, if I can summarize the problems, and that's one of the that's three domains we're trying to work on is unplanned urban growth, uh, and related to that is the issues with mobility, and of course related to that is environment as well as health. So in regards to health, uh, there was also a, a study conducted by University of Chicago a couple of years ago when the concentration was not this high. Uh, and they estimated that an average Lahori uh, would leave this, would lose six years of their life because of uh, air pollution. Uh, and this is in Lahore, Islamabad is not so good either. Um, so on average for Pakistan, it was I think 3.5 years. Uh, Pakistani would leave lose about 3.5 years of their life. So these are the challenges that not just Pakistan faces, I think that these are world over, especially in the developing countries. Um, so this is, would be, I mean, in summary, uh, one part of that question, uh, one answer to that part of the question, uh, which is, uh, these are the problems, right? Now, how can technology help? Technology is not the silver bullet I always tell whenever I'm talking to people. Uh, I mean, it has to be coupled with governance, uh, solving issues with governance, but technology can, of course, serve as an enabler, uh, as a crucial enabler uh, for solving these problems. Um, so um, let's just let's talk about examples, right? So uh, environment and health, for instance, I talked about how people lose their lives, uh, six years of their life uh, to, air, air, to poor air quality. Um, so to, how can tech help? Um, the first thing that can it can help is through fine-grained analysis of what the problem is. Uh, and, and until this day, we will not been able to accurately identify what are the main reasons why this high level of pollution arises. So this could be solved by 
spending out a large um, sort of a network of sensors, uh, which are low cost, but they're calibrated uh, perhaps through some model driven, uh, some data analytics uh, at a fine res spatial resolution throughout the city. And through that data that comes in, you do data analytics, uh, you do some sort of um, uh, machine learning uh, based um, uh, analysis to identify what the sources of pollution are, um, where it's coming from, um, to predict whether there's going to be hazardous air in, in the near future, and most importantly, to help in making decision support systems for the policymakers. Uh, so, uh, and that could all be done through uh, data analytics, all be done, done through, um, and, and, and people are working throughout the world on developing something like this. Uh, I can talk about mobility. Um, and the first thing, for instance, you would need to find out to solve mobility problems is to figure out how do people move in a city? Um, and where do they travel from to where? I mean, where are their homes? Where are their workplaces? Um, what kind of transportation do they take? Do they take cars? Do they take motorbikes? Uh, how many of a percentage take motorbikes? Now, this could be done, and this has been done traditionally, uh, through service. Uh, I, I often see um, a numerator sitting at the at the side of the road wearing, ye wearing yellow jackets and they're just counting off in, on a piece of paper. Uh, they're actually counting uh, traffic. Uh, that data is actually uh, fed but into planning purposes, should be fed into purposes. Uh, but this could be done through tech. Uh, you could use AI-driven um, so from traffic cameras, for instance, as one of the things that we're working on. Um, analyzing video feeds uh, on traffic junctions uh, to figure out where people are coming in, where they're going. Mobile phone records uh, that has uh, proliferated in our population, even in the developing countries, those could be used to identify how people are moving in a city. Um, and uh, and public transport records, for instance, uh, and everything is digitized now. Um, and because of that digitization, you can actually figure out where, people, where do people get in into a public transition stop, uh, tra public transport stop, and where do they get out, uh, and, and and just make an estimate of how people are moving. Um, and 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 similarly, um, I mean, population density map, for instance, is is crucial uh, for any planning purposes. And the last census, for instance, we had in Pakistan was 2017. Uh, that's outdated now. Um, and it's not publicly available data. The data for that is not publicly available either. But that is crucial for any planning purposes. And then the question is, can, could technology help in in perhaps um, in, in developing a estimate of where the population resides and maybe coming up with quantifiable numbers as to the number of people living per square kilometers? Yes, you could do that. Technology, we're, we're now to a level where we have AI-based methods uh, that could just analyze um, rooftops, for instance, and, and, and identify what is the size of that household. Uh, and through some other secondary data sets, maybe come up with a good estimate of uh, the population density. Um, electricity consumption data, that's all digitized as well. So if you have electricity level, uh, a metered level data for how much of an electricity is being consumed at any particular location. That gives you an idea, and there are studies out there that gives you an idea of the number of people living in that household. Um, and and, that, and, and as, as well as the socioeconomic status of the people in the house. So you could just take the show the electricity consumption during the summer months uh, versus the electricity consumption in the winter months. And, and that would give you an estimate of whether they, they work, they, they have ACs installed in houses or not. Uh, and that's an indicator of the socioeconomic status. And there are lots and lots of other things uh, that you could do, once again, to inform uh, planning, inform decision making. I mean, one of the other examples I always give to people is, I mean, if I look through Lahore, I just do a Google search and, and figure out where the Gloria jeans are. Uh, and if you see on the map, I mean, the location of the Gloria jeans, it's really, really uncanny as to, I mean, they're either in DHA, uh, either, and so those, those of you are, are familiar with uh, with with Lahore, with all what I'm talking about, uh, DHA, Mordel Town, Gulberg, uh, there's one in Valencia, there's one in Barrier Town, there's none in the actual Lahore. There's no Gloria G. And that gives you an, an implicit information about the spending power of people living in those areas. So that's the kind of things that we're trying to look into. Uh, from inform planning, uh, inform urban design.
So this would obviously involve multidisciplinary collaboration, and there is obviously the benefit of bringing many, many experts together from different fields to work on this. So how do you approach this uh, problem? Yeah, so Saad, um, I mean, when we started out, um, I mean, building up a proposal so uh, on 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 how we're going to go about this. Um, I mean, we were just a bunch of techs, techy guys uh, from electrical engineering who. We wanted to do something with AI um, and our expertise in AI to solve some social impact problem. And we figured out, I mean, this is this has a great potential. Uh, but then the more we looked into this, I mean, we realized um, uh, that solving any any social problem uh, would require uh, it, it is actually a transdisciplinary uh, requires transdisciplinary solutions. So, and that's why uh, if you look through our team, uh, so we have about. Um, 30 full-time uh, 30 students and full-time uh, staff working on the on these problems there's seven pis uh, principal investigators um, and these pis for us come in from uh, not only electrical engineering backgrounds but and computer science but also from public health uh, from life sciences uh, but also from uh, economics urban economics uh, and urban policy level experts as well as from people who specialize in, in issues related to technology adoption and that's really, really crucial. Um, so just to give you uh, an example, I mean, we, we whenever we have these group meetings, we have one every day. Uh, so we have a bunch of techs, uh, techie guys sitting in with people from economics background, uh, trying to uh, identify solutions to problems. And that's really an, an eye opener for us. Um, and because when we propose solutions, we we'd look, we'd, we'd, we go fancy, uh, we go broad, uh, and say this is the solution. This is what is, for example, deployed in London transportation. Uh, so, for example, London, London has something called congestion charges, um, has something called restricted access. Uh, and we were talking about how to solve mobility problems in uh, in Wall City of Lahore. Uh, and that's it. Well, let's do this. Uh, problem solved. And this is how they saved money over the earth. This congestion, the address congestion problems in in London or Barcelona. Uh, we looked at those examples. This is how we do it in in. Uh, in World City of Lahore, and then people amongst our team, I told us, I mean, you, you have to have a reality check, I and mean, you need to go and see actually the conditions there. Um, so, so, and then we talk to the stakeholders as well. The stakeholders uh, really, really give us a good picture on the ground. Um, so, we're moving forward with the same uh, sort of ideas, except uh, that that we we incorporate there uh, the the non-tech feedback. And see how it can be fed back into our algorithms. Uh, how it can be fed back into uh, identify biases in our in our, for example, data that we collect. Um, so that has been a real eye opener. Uh, there's something we've not been used to, um, yes. and uh, I, I think that's how we make a difference. If you need to get so, uh, so there are quite a few use cases that you've mentioned, yeah. and um, it, obviously you've mentioned mobility and uh, some of the environment issues and Water, for example, yeah. water hours. So, which use cases are you sort of like working on at the priority, uh, and where you've made any inroads? All right. So, um, I think that there are many. Um, I think this has to come about through engaging stakeholders, um, and there are many public sector stakeholders that we've engaged. Um, and I, I can talk about one, uh, for instance, uh, which is related to not only mobility, uh, but also with um, uh, with health, for instance, or, 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 or safety. So that we're working with, for example, Punjab Emergency Services Department. Um, and and uh, and if I summarize it in one sentence, we're trying to uh, use data-driven methods to improve rate road safety. Uh, so uh, Punjab Emergency Services Department, which is 112, uh, 1122, uh, they went digital recently in the sense that all of their ambulances are now being tracked uh, through GPS. Uh, they they also have an uh, sort of an app in which they log in, uh, log details about where the accident took place, uh, what were the reasons behind the accident, uh, what was uh, the the vehicles and what were the vehicles involved, was there a motorbike, what were the outcomes, uh, how long did it take for the ambulance to reach there, so all of that data is is there, uh, and we're collaborating with them to get access to data, so we now have access to their data. And so one of the things, for example, we did was just to analyze the data, apply some uh, statistical techniques on it, 
to identify something called uh, road traffic crash black spots uh, in the city of Lahore. Um, and this is just, um, I mean, there's some statistical techniques applied to geospatial data uh, and identified five top black spots in the city of Lahore. I mean, these were there, uh, but had this data not been there, uh, I mean, it would have been very difficult to identify, you know, where the where the problems are. Uh, so from that data, we identified where the problems are, and then we conducted road safety audit. So uh, I, I think what I want to allude is to is to the power of that data uh, in pointing us to where the problems were, and then conducting a more detailed audit on what the uh, so we conducted that audit, provided recommendations uh, as well. Uh, so this is one thing, for instance, uh, we're working on. And related to that as well is uh, is data driven optimization of um, of of where those where they're located where, the, where those uh, resources should be placed. I mean, they have ambulances involve multiple types, and they have ALS, which are the regular ambulances. They also have BLS now, which is the which are the bike ambulances, which will only provide first aid. Um, where should they be placed at different times of the day, uh, so as to minimize uh, the average response time? And you can you can make build a digital point here from the past data and try to predict of what is going to happen had these not been here and somewhere else. Uh, so that's an optimization problem that we're trying to work on. Um, so this is one example. I can go on and on if time permits, um, but I think uh, I, I'll stop here um, and and we continue with if you have. If you have... So obviously uh, you need to involve policymakers, and yeah. I think then bridging the gap between uh, policy making and academia that becomes a huge issue. Uh, and obviously that needs to translate research on needs to translate into actionable policy recommendation. Yep. So how are you working with that? Yeah. So that's a that's a tough one. <laughs> so um, um, I so I think um, um, bridging that gap between academia and policymaker is really what we're trying to work on. I mean, that's one of our urgent uh, or, or most important uh, areas of focus. Um, and so the one of a few, a few of the ways we've been doing this is so we've been conducting regular uh, dissemination and dialogue events. Uh, so we've, I think we've had three uh, in, 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 a, in 18 months uh, where we just send out invites uh, to the government uh, to come and talk uh, and let, get everybody in the same room, uh, some academics there as well, some policy makers there as well, and just talk about what the problems are, what are the problems that they face, what are the solutions uh, that we could provide. So that's one of the instruments uh, that we use to bridge those gaps. Uh, one of the other instruments that we use to bridge those gaps is just to make cold calls. Uh, we just write to people. Uh, and 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 despite everything we we, we hear about the public sector. I mean, there are champions out there, uh, and and we've received positive responses from from many of them. For example, Punjab Emergency Services Department is one of those. Um, and through those call, call cold calls uh, or through some other contacts, we've been able to uh, build relationships. For example, Punjab Safe City Authority is another uh, organization that we have a great relationship. At. Our team is actually now in their office uh, working on their video feeds, um, and. So that's so that's another instrument um the another one of the instrument is through capacity building events um and we did this recently uh, i think a week ago um in which once again uh reached out to people we're working with and but also reached out to lots of all provinces just wrote to chief secretaries uh and said we're just conducting this event it's free of cost we're going to bear the cost uh, through the funds that we have uh and you just send people uh, and and we got a very very good response, uh, and uh, so that's one of the other ways uh, we've been trying to uh, bridge that gap. Uh, and through social media posts, um, we've been doing uh, lots and lots of LinkedIn, LinkedIn uh, and so we've been getting unsolicited now queries from people in the government, uh, and and as well as the private sector, uh, asking uh, what we could provide, what services we. Could uh, so yes, it's a uh, it's it's a it's a tough one, uh, but uh, we're we're inching there uh, closer and closer, I think. Okay, so that's great. Um, so in terms of data collection, obviously it's limited. Uh, it's been collected for a certain strata. And maybe it's easily available for there. Then then there, there's the case of social social inclusion, equities, and all yeah. of that. So how do you 
I mean, are you sort of like looking into this fact? Yeah. How do you promote equity and social inclusion with this recommendation and research? Yeah, I think um, uh, that's another tough one because uh, I mean we have a great digital divide. Um, but I think uh, um, I mean before before working towards promoting that equity or towards that social inclusion that you talked about, um, I, I think the first step is to realize uh, where. Data is biased, uh, and um, uh, so I, I think we've sort of now realized uh, what specific strata that we're collecting data from. For example, Google API, uh, Google Maps API is something we use often. Um, and I mean, at the very beginning, we did not really, really have a realization of of what this represents. I mean, this does not represent somebody. Uh, this data will not represent somebody who does not have a smartphone. Uh, and and it's, it's it's later, and we'll come to that realization. There's just something that we need to do about that. Um, similarly, uh, when we took up pre-trained AI models, applying them on 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 video cameras, for example, those deployed by Safe City or the ones that we're deploying ourselves as now. I mean, there's um, is hardly a rickshaw moving uh, in the U.S. Or I, I don't think there's any rickshaw moving in the U.S. So I mean, so. So models won't be trained on, on that. Um, so we, we're now collecting data uh, on on ground in, in our localities, uh, so that at the very least we we could we could take care of that. So um, I, I wouldn't say we've we've affected this um, this social inclusion part uh, as, as far as the digital divide is concerned. Um, but we we have a realization that this is something that needs to be incorporated. So another example I can give you is, for example, the World City Authority, the thing that we were. So, I mean, before we went into this uh, uh, this uh, recommendation of putting in congestion charging, so we just sort of writing up a recommendation, you know, if you do this, this is the benefit that you're going to get, uh, a quantifiable benefit that you get. Uh, we realize, I mean, we, we can't really do this without really consulting uh, the stakeholders that are on the ground. Uh, so at the moment, uh, we're ditching all of those recommendations and actually now started talking through the wall city, uh, through their engagement. Uh, in the next phase, we're going to do surveys uh, to traders on the ground to see what they think about congestion charging. And we know there's going to be a lot of uh, reluctance, there's a lot of opposition. At the very least, we could try to understand what their reservations are. Um, so, yeah, so... I, I'm not sure if, I, if this is a perfect solution that we've come up with, uh, but at the very least, we have a realization, at least I can. Yeah, I guess in that particular sense, uh, this cheaper smartphones and I think data, and obviously you, you mentioned that Google and all those public keys are sort of yeah. like helping you. So, so I think in terms of measuring the success of a project or any initiative, mm. uh, what matrix do you sort of like use and uh, huh. obviously the, those must evolve over a period of time. Yep, yep. Yeah, so uh, I, I think, um, I mean, I, I don't want to make this a cliche here, you know, so, but that's actually true. I mean, we were driven by making a difference um, and uh, I mean, we use that a lot in, in, our, in our dissemination and, and, and one of the videos I made as well. So we were, we, we want to make a difference. Uh, but that difference Many a times is not quantifiable. Um, nevertheless, so we have we have to have some KPIs, of course, um, and and those KPIs, as you pointed out, yes, they're they're going to evolve over time. So, um, at, at the initial, so we've we've been active about eighteen months now, um, and in, in the first phase, the year one and year two as well. I mean, our KPI was how many organizations we're now engaged, right? Just uh, those cold calls. And signing MOUs, if you will, uh, getting the paperwork done, building a relationship. So that was one of the KPIs, believe it or not. I mean, so we we wanted to engage as many people as we possibly can. Now, with that, we're moving into the next phase. Um, comes in the quality of that engagement, um, and what are we really doing with their data or 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 on the ground? Um, and so to the target is to take that engagement to the next level uh, where our recommendations could be adopted. Could be adopted, whether they be pilot projects. So that's one of the other KPIs 
not right now, uh, but perhaps in, in year three, uh, that's what we're looking at. And and I think the holy grail, if you, if you will, would be would be then to conduct an impact assessment um, of of when these recommendations were put into place. What is the quantifiable difference that that we really really made? Um, so uh, I think that sort of gives you an idea of uh, of how uh, we we are evolving over time. Um, and I, at the moment, I think we 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 think ourselves as just. Um, uh, sowing the seed uh, of uh, of realization among pu- public sector officials in particular uh, that you know these things exist out there these are beneficial uh, and we hope uh, through that engagement that we'll be able to create champions um, in the years to come uh, yeah I'm not sure if I've, I've answered that no, no that's perfectly fine so I guess let's just get uh, maybe deeper into some of the initiatives that you've worked on and um, how is it contributing to some of the urban development? I think this is a forum and you can maybe talk more about those. Yeah, so um, so I, so Punjab Emergency Services Department, for instance, is one uh, that I talked to you about, right? Um, and so we, we also have an active engagement, for instance, with Punjab Safe Safeties Authority. Um, and there are actually three different interrelated threads that we're working with them. So the first relates to using their infrastructure. Uh, so they have about 8,000 cameras installed in the city of Lahore. Uh, not all of them are traffic cameras, so they have some traffic cameras as well, which can actually, they, they have built-in uh, license plate recognition, uh, but then there are others who are just security cameras. Uh, and what we want to do is to install uh, or to, to deploy our AI algorithms, deep learning models, uh, on those on that infrastructure, so that they become traffic cameras as well, um, and that's that's why our team is actually now housed in, on their premises. On their premises, because of privacy issues, I and mean, you can't really get access to their feed, uh, so our team has to be there. Now, once uh, let's say the wish list is that every one of the traffic cameras is now converted to an to a, uh, any one of the security cameras is converted to a traffic camera, we could then track where people are moving, where from, where to. Um, and that would help in in, in, in mobility uh, planning and, and, and stuff. Um, we also want to correlate correlate that with Google API, uh, and and because they just give you the travel times are not necessarily the counts, even though they're going to have the counts themselves. But the ones that they make publicly available just the travel times. Uh, can we build a model to go backwards? I was an inverse mapping is an inverse problem. Um, so that's one thread that we're working with them. Uh, there's another one on uh, on a smart parking. Uh, parking is another real issue, uh, in, especially in Islamabad now. Uh, and um, so, um, and and uh, they were actually bringing in. Um, uh, they, they've actually signed a contract uh, with uh, I think Nokia, where they want to deploy uh, sensors, smart city sensors near uh, Liberty uh, near uh, M Malam Road. Um, for, for parking, so individualized parking sensors on each parking slot, and we were talking to them, and we said, "Why don't we do this? Try to do this with a with a video camera. I mean, just place a video camera at an elevation, which has a bird's eye view of of all the cars, and just use AI models. I mean, the, the existing models out there, we retrain them as well uh, to identify and and conduct parking analytics." And they said, "Okay, why don't you install them?" Uh, um, so we're working with them and deploying them in Liberty now. Uh, so there's one deployed in Lums as well. We're constantly monitoring uh, the parking spaces. Uh, and the third uh, side that we're working with them is um, is revamping the Women's Safety app um, and, and and working with them to to work with their uh, Women's Safety app. So they launched this Punjab Women's Safety app, uh, which is a tool for I mean has an SOS for instance for for the female gender. Um, it has so we propose some features on top of it. We also proposed uh, data analytics to identify uh, hotspots of where fe- women feel unsafe, uh, and so on and so forth. So these are the three threads uh, primarily that we work on. There are other suggestions that they have, but I think we um, and the other things that they want us to work on. Uh, but we're sticking with these three uh, for now. Uh, we also are actively working with um, trying to engage with with waste management companies. And that's really a question of operations research. 
uh, and, and and they spend a lot of money on 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 infrastructure they spend a lot of money on vehicles to collect the trash from various places um and and we want to optimize those operations so as to save the cost um and then we're building tools uh for for that purpose um and uh we're trying to work with the hard waste management company uh, with this and engaging others now uh in, in other provinces as well so uh these are uh and and there there's some other uh for example building uh footprint detection that's that's what i talked about how cities are expanding um how can we develop population density models how can we develop social economic maps all of these sets are some things that we're we're actively working on uh develop so meta for instance has a population density map uh, and i talked to friends at meta they they about this as well um and world pop has a population density map uh, for this for for pakistan and we've taken a look at both uh and they they're not very accurate um you can visually just see that they specify they say this, this is the number of people living and you actually see this is just a barren map um so we're trying to refine that we're also trying to work on the social economic uh, mapping um and uh, there's like lots and lots of uh, other threads so uh, an optimization is a, is a big part of it resource optimization wherever that comes in so for the air quality sensors as well we have a recommendation system of where they should be placed uh based on the pollution sources um this management of resources for 1122 management resource or waste management companies um yeah and 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 several others okay so uh, obviously you're, you're researching on the emerging trends and technologies that are out there and that are helping up with the in, in all the information gathering and this uh, sustainable urban development so can you please talk about some of those trends and tools that are out there that for the down can be brought in over here uh, uh sorry so so tools that that are um that are already out there yeah they're already this used by different governments Let's just talk about some of the technologies hmm. that can be that was was a, like like a wish list for you. Yeah, so I I think a wish list would be. Um, so wish list is a little far away uh, in the sense that we've actually we we figured out that I mean we our our problems could be solved uh, with um, we don't really need lots of complicated expensive. uh technology uh to be deployed to solve majority of the problems um and 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 the more higher up you get i think there the the diminishing returns uh but nevertheless we're academics uh so we're always on the lookout for for wish list what could be done um so i i i think i mean i'm fascinated for instance by uh, by the idea of digital twins um and uh, and, and people are looking into how they could be used uh to make those decisions so you you basically run a simulation in a digital twin and figure out what the impact is going to be um and in a sense we we're, we're trying to do that for with emergency the punjab emergency thing i talked about so we built a twin in 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 essence uh it's not as advanced as as uh, as we we don't normally think it to be uh, it's just a simulation uh so that's something maybe that's on our uh, radar um and if you're really talking about a wish list you know uh it could be um model driven ai or or data centric ai so data centric ai is in particular um because i mean often times the the data that we collect um is has to be engineered uh, has to be engineered for the ai to work and i think uh, andrew ng I think he did a uh, did a recent article on this uh, as well uh, promoting data centric AI where data has to be engineered so if the AI model could work with good data which may be not a lot uh, not exhaust uh so I I think those could be uh, one of the another wish list um on our radar yeah so okay okay yeah. that's great that's great so uh in terms of risk or any so sort of consequences um, of relying too much on technology <laughs> and data <laughs> yeah i think there's a lot of lots of social uh, aspects here as well which has to be have to be accounted i mean 
Uh, before I think I talk about the risk here, na, I can give you a specific examples of the challenges that are not necessarily technical, but uh, but technology has to cater to that. Um, one simple example: we were talking to a waste management company, um, and um, uh, they they wanted some sort of automation on some sort of monitoring of their performance, their KPIs, uh, on how their workers are, are doing. Uh, and and we propose, you know, this could be done and this could be done. And one of the things they said really, really struck me, uh, which was, we want to have as little of a human element inside this as possible. And and we asked why? Because the humans game it. Uh, because our workers game it. So if for instance, if you ask them to just take a picture of when you're done with your work, and say it's cleaned up, you just take a picture. And, and I think they said we have solutions like that developed by some other companies. And they said they never work. Uh, those solutions never work. And that points to um, uh, some social uh, dimensions, which needs a social scientist to solve. And 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 so the tech, therefore, has to adapt to that. So I, do you solve that social problem or you do you adapt the tech uh, to that, uh, to the societal constraint that really really is yeah, so um so that's one of the one one little uh example that i can give you and there's another example i can give you you know there's uh i mean the for, for one of the first projects that we do uh when we're we're teaching uh microcontrollers or, or anything like that i mean we just uh, ask students to build a smart traffic lights system right we have sense, some sensors there you know, and, and the students are built, able to build that as a lab, as a semester project. Yet, uh, we don't see them uh, in, the, in, our, in our country. Um, and we have recently found out they've actually been deployed. They, they are here in Lahore. They are here, they're deployed in Lahore, but they're never used. Um, and could you guess why? Um, the people, they're used to many best tests. Yeah, yeah, so... so yeah, so, there's, so there's, the the issue is that there's a lot of, uh, I mean, we have a lot of uh, HR, right? Uh, so why why use a traffic light or a smart traffic light when you have a traffic warden to do that, right? So once again, uh, the, the, those um, non-technical issues that uh, that trump are these technical uh, solutions. Um, and 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 so so the I, I think uh, this would be part of the answer to your question, but I think what you talked about is uh, risks, right? Or the potential risk. And the risks actually go back to that 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 social inclusion uh, and, and equity that you raised earlier, right? Um, so any data that we use, especially if it's collected through um, through instruments that uh, that are there and, and that amplify the digital divide, um, and that, that means they're catering to a specific uh, sector or specific section of our society and not the others. Uh, so that's one of the of the uh, greater risk associated with that. The data biases, of course, uh, in AI, you don't want them. So uh, you'd be familiar with the uh, with the study I think they conducted um, where for for justice systems and, and they they figured out yeah this was biased towards uh, people of color, um, and 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 that, that was because of the data biases, right? Uh, and, and, and we need to be aware. So that's a risk uh, that we need to be aware of. Um, so th therefore, I think the human oversight is really, really crucial. I mean, it's not like a, we would expect AI to take over in our in our city and be doing doing everything. Um, and, and that's not what our aim either is at city. We just well, we just wish to enable uh, solving those problems um, where the human oversight is critical is is crucial. Um, so, so one of the, for example, uh, end goal or a wish list for us would be, for example, if we work in Punjab Energy Services Department, would be to give them some knobs that that they work with, right? Uh, and and they're tuning the knobs, and and based on the tuning those knobs uh, and putting in their own experience as well, the the tool that we develop just gives them an estimate of what's going to happen, but the final decision of where things should be, that's going to be taken up. Uh, by, by the team, by, by the, by the humans, and that perhaps feeds in back uh, to the tool as well. Um, so that's the idea, uh, in in my mind at least. Uh, that's the kind of tool that we should develop for, for example, Punjab Emergency Services Department. 
Okay, great. So, uh, what are, what's the vision right now? What's the future look like for the city uh, that you're working on? Yeah. Uh, you want the priorities and all of that. Hmm. Yeah, so um, at the moment, um, we are a research center uh, in the sense that we uh, conduct research only. Um, for us, the key priority, even though I'm not sure if this is the answer to your question, but I think for, for us, the key priority would be financial sustainability of our activities. Because um, I, I want to use this forum to say this, because um, because we, I mean, when people talk to us as an academic institution, you know, they have, they have, I think their expectations are very different than what the ground reality dictates. Um, so because we're an academic institution, that does not mean we have free labor. Uh, and that means we have to, so when you hire people, we have to pay them a salary, uh, their operating costs. So uh, so that's one of the key priorities for us. And that's active, something we're actively working on uh, to work on the financial sustainability model. Um, in terms of um, in terms of where we're headed in terms of key priorities, I think that key priorities we, we would like to see are recommendations adopted by stakeholders, by at least some stakeholders within the next year and a half. So that's one of our goals. Um, and and in those year and a half, even if it's a pilot study, we want that to be uh, such a study which has a quantifiable benefit. So we can show to the world, you know, this is what the what the study what what the recommendation resulted in, the quantifiable benefit in particular. Um, we foresee ourselves um, as being a regional hub of innovation, uh, not just in the year and a half, I mean, maybe down the, down the line, uh, that uh, that not only focuses on developing that innovation, I, I think this is important, but also more importantly, to to build capacity of the end users. Uh, so our goal, so that so that they don't really need us. Then. Uh, I mean, we want to get out of the picture, so we want to build that capacity, create an ecosystem where it's not just us so that are, and, and there are other pockets of people out there. Pakistan as well, we're working on this, uh, but we want to create a bigger ecosystem that flourishes, um, and 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 we wish to do that through building capacity, especially of the public sector organizations. Um, and and apart from research, I think because this is uh, the first thing I said, uh, we were only a research center for now. Maybe um, I, I at the very least foresee ourselves uh, offering cross-cutting academic programs as well. Um, so, they, we, we, which are not just confined to one discipline, uh, but rather where multiple disciplines come together and, and maybe we offer programs uh, to train the next generation of experts, uh, trained in use of uh, data for sustainability, uh, data for cities in particular, not just cities in particular, but sustainability in, in, in general. Uh, so yeah, so that's some of the things I had in mind, uh, we had in mind of where we're headed uh, and, and let's hope for the best. Okay, so in terms of obviously uh, volunteers and the financial support and all of that. Yeah. So where they can, can they find you? Uh, what's the best way to reach you guys? Yeah, so <laughs> so they can reach us uh, at oh, on our email, which is cityatlums.edu.pk. Um, uh, we have an active LinkedIn page uh, where we regularly post our activities, uh, our uh, results, uh, our engagements. Uh, we also have a website, city.lums.tdu.pk. Uh, I, I think those, uh, that's where the reason, or just drop by my office. <laughs> so this, I have an open door policy. I mean, so we wish to, anybody wishes to drop by, talk to us, more than, more than welcome to us. So, uh, moment that was one great talk. Uh, so, thanks a lot for your time. Uh, Thank you. Really, really, really phenomenal. Uh, anything you want to add? Anything you want to share with the audience, please? Yeah. So, um, yeah, we're always looking for good people. Uh, if you think you can play a role, uh, reach out to us, um, and and we we'll, uh, we're very open. We like to work with as many stakeholders as we possibly can, uh, formally or informally. Um, yeah, and, and, and together, uh, we look forward to creating an impact for making a difference.